This is Lithgow. It's only a couple of hours from Sydney. Yeah, you heard me right. Just two hours from the big smoke and you can get stuck into some seriously exciting wheeling, awesome bush camping, you can really see plenty of spectacular natural wonders along the way. If you ask me, it's the perfect place to carry out a four-wheel drive action reader's trip. Looking for a mad deal on the gear that you're chasing? Like this awning, I've got you covered. Keep an eye out throughout this video for an exclusive discount code and get 10% off store-wide for all four drive Super Center YouTube subscribers. And as always, enjoy this adventure because this is an epic trip. Some time back, we put a post up on Facebook asking for people to join Sean and I on a four-wheel drive action DVD trip. Well, we got close to 4,000 entries, but there can only be one winner. So we picked one at random. We're on our way out now to meet up with them. Say good day. Well, Graham, you got a copy, mate? Yeah, I sort of, I sort of can see you through all the soot. <laughs> mate, believe it or not, I haven't been in the back of Lithgow here for some time now. Well, I don't think your skill set will have changed much, mate, and the uh, environment hasn't changed much out of you too. It's still pretty darn gnarly, and it's, I reckon, for somewhere being so close to a major capital city, Sydney, I'm talking about, it's a really spectacular part of the world too. This is where we're supposed to be. Yeah, left-hander, mate. Yeah, I think I can actually see him. The boys are ready, rearing a go by the looks of it. These blokes right here are Dylan and Jacob, and they're four-wheel drive enthusiasts through and through. How are you, boys? How are you going? Good to see you again, mate. Good to see you. Jacob, how are you, buddy? How good to you? see you. Good to see How's things? Mate, look at this thing. I know, it's a beast, isn't it? I might have a little bit of envy. Solid front end. Yeah. What have we got here? 80 series diff? 80 series. Oh, she's got one good part on her. This beast has had a solid axle swap up the front end using an 80 series diff. It's also double locked on 35s with a heck of a lot of fruit to go with it. Something tells me it's gonna take one heck of a track to stop this four wheel drive. That is a thing of great beauty, mate. Certainly is, mate. That is not, uh, that is, that is not bought, that is built. That is. One modification we are gonna need to make right now, knock some air into these tires. Go-to pressures right here for all of us is 18 PSI. Some pretty gnarly tracks around here and we don't really know what the traction's gonna be like, but you can rest assured we're gonna need every single bit of traction we can find. Now look, we're starting this adventure by taking on the pipeline track in Nune State Forest. And from there, we're gonna head out towards Mount Walker. We've got some butte bush camping on the edge of Lake Lyle and two amazing natural wonders that I'm really keen to show the boys. One being the Lost City and the other, the old glowworm tunnels. So for now, let's lock in the hubs and get stuck in. Shono's gonna be leading the pack on this trip because he lived in Sydney for many years. And so this area right here was his playground for quite some time. Here we go, straight into it, boys. Yeah, just keep an eye out on the sides, mate. There are bits of pipe hanging out of the wall. I'm guessing it used to take water down to lift you at some stage or something like that. Yeah, right. Um, any idea what they call it, the pipeline track? Nah, I've racked my brains over it. I can't think of a reason, mate. Nah, fair enough, mate. It's a lot of fun, though. How you going, Dylan? You having fun, mate? Yeah, mate. Having a ball, getting a few pinstripes on the way up. Yeah, it looks like. There's a few big rocks there, Graham. You might want to sit on a towel for this bit, mate. It's going to get pretty slippery. Suddenly, I heard a noise up the front that no one wants to hear this soon into a trip. Now, it sounded to me like a CV, but at this point, I wasn't sure. It's not a matter of if you're going to break a CV when you're driving tough tracks like this. It's a matter of when. Going up, though, things were about to get serious. This is where the pipeline track really gets its reputation from. This has changed dramatically since I was last year. Look at that. Look at that. I like the fact that it just sort of goes up the hill, it turns in the in yeah. the in the rock step. I reckon yeah. your best bet is um I'm gonna come around here and just drive fourth, straight up it. Fourth gear and hold it flat. Just send it. Just it's proper isn't it? Yeah. That's a that's a proper thing. But it's off camera and you sort of have to turn into it to go up so yeah. Pretty proper. Yeah, I'm keen to give it a go. I actually don't want to look at it anymore. I just want to get in and have a go. Shorno's up now. He's got all the traction in the world. Big tyres, locker at the rear, and about as much flex as a sick giraffe. Something tells me he's going to make the start of this track look like a walk in the park. That raw suspension under there is really working right now, and it's got to, too. This is where you want to try and keep all four wheels on the ground at one point. That's a good 
climb. Yeah, just just couldn't climb the front. What is that noise? I just want to have a look under. Oh, is that the exhaust, that noise? Yeah, it is your exhaust. Yeah. There yeah. you go, that's your exhaust. That's exhaust. It's just going, it's just pushing a lot of air out of the rocks. No, exhaust gas is coming out. The exhaust is hard up against a rock. And um, we thought it, <laughs> we all thought it was a tyre that was flat. But all my tyres were still up. And um, we hear all this air coming out. Nah. All right, let's have a winch. Yep. Very straightforward recovery, of course. We just need to pop short up and over that lip. There's a tree directly in front. There's nothing here that really needs to be explained other than to say, this, <laughs> this is why you buy a winch. Okay, he's up and over that step, but it doesn't end there. It's tight through here, real tight. Save the day. How good is this? Pipeline track in Lithgow. How good. All right, now it's time for the lads. Yeah, you can decide. Keep riding, keep riding, keep riding. You're just in that perfect wheelbase where you're in two divots at the front, like yeah. perfectly, and in a divot at the back, perfectly. You may need to pop it up. It's just bellying out the slider, so if you chuck a rock on the other side, it might just lift that rear tyre up and make it look easy. Yeah, oh, well positioned. Pop it up. Should be right now. That's just that's just 101 rock packing on rock steps. I reckon that's a good line. Oh, I should get out of the way. Yeah, that's it. Yep. Yeah. Right. Front locker all day, every day. Yeah, start turning it with me. Just slow. That's it. beautiful. Yep, it's real slow. Nice still. Good driving. Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. Wasn't much in that. No. I hope that's me bar that's getting fed, not me lovely new flares. No, it's your bar. No. All right. Very good. It's time. As they say now, mate. It's time for Fenton to Third fly. time is a charm, they always say. Yeah, I've third seen time time. lucky is another one. Yeah. The third car rule and the three little pigs. There's three things for you. So Go which one it. am I following? I don't know. It'll make sense when you get behind the wheel, okay, I think. Okay, done. All right, I'm going to do that then. You're like, a, you're like a tutor and stuff. I'd say a bit of a Yoda. Alrighty, stand back. Come around to the left here and try and pick a nice level line. A lot of things to drop into. That's alright. The bass plates are four, mate. Oh, that was a big hit. My plan of attack here is to keep it low and slow. I don't want to get too aggressive on the throttle. I'm going to try and pick a high line because I am driving an IFS and I'm lower slung than the other vehicles with smaller tyres. It's going to have to be a fair bit of packing. I'll give it a little bit more. You gotta bounce it. What if I come right down off it and we pack it and I'll just send it? Well, the, the tactic here is just to give it another go. In Graham's words, he's gonna send it. <laughs> it's always fun and exciting to watch this. It's just let's go for you. It's, you know, one vehicle goes through, moves a couple of rocks, he's getting prepared. Look, I better put some rocks down there, and then um, hopefully he'll be able to just send it straight up. That'd be good. Pack them up, boys. Still not 100% sure about that clicking noise up the front left. I've got my suspicions it's a CV, but as long as I'm going forward, I'm going to keep going forward. This is the tricky bit. Sean, I didn't make it up through here. I'm going to give it one punt and then stop and see what happens. Can you try and freeze ball that? Really straightforward recovery through here. Of course, I just need to drag myself up and over and I'm done. It really is only about a four wheel drive length and I'm through. Whoa, what was that? You are right, that's a better one. Man, that scared the crud out of me. That's a better one. I've lost me nerve. <laughs> This narrow bit won't be an issue for me. Of course, the D-Max is a bit narrower than the other vehicles, so I can just scoot through here like it's a walk in the park. Yeah! <laughs> All right, 
I've got this now. Okay, I'm pretty stoked with that. I've done it, but I kind of knew something wasn't right. So I've decided to get out and check it out. Mate, you know me quite well. Yes. I'm not a mechanic. Yes. yes. <laughs> you said that too. Very this is true. This is true. But, mate, even I can see yeah. that I've done CV down there. Now, look, busting a CV when you're off roading is not, in my opinion, it's not a matter of if it's going to happen, yeah. it's 100% a matter of when it's going to happen. And I've just done it here. Now, it's day one. Day one. What I'm going to do, Dylan's got a grinder. Yeah. I'm just going to cut that sub off. Okay, stop leave spinning. It yep. Leave it. Leave that in. Take the take the main assembly out. Put it in the back of the truck, and I'm going to out drive you in three wheel drive. Challenge accepted. I can't fix it out here. No, that's a smart thing to do, to be yep. honest, because then it's not going to rotate, not gonna in rotate the air anymore no. or cause any more grief. And the beauty is, it's a sealed unit, so if you keep this end onto the transfer, you can't do any damage up there. Oil's going to stay. Everything's going to stay up there. Yep. It's perfect. I just haven't got drive drive to this wheel. I drive to the other wheel. So you reckon you can? Keep up with us in three-wheel drive. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes, I reckon I can. I reckon you yep. can. I've seen you the way you wheel this thing. We'll get this thing ground off. Yep. And uh, back in the game. Exactly right. Three-wheel drive action. Yeah, Bring it on. With the D-Max now in three-wheel drive, we push deeper into the Nunes State Forest. Well, boys, it's getting to about uh, that time of day. We need to make a decision if we go to camp or not pretty soon. Uh, I'm going to suggest something, mate. Something wild and wacky. Yeah, I'm all ears, mate. If you're doing the cooking, I'm going to say no straight up. No, nah, no, nah, it's a bit. <laughs> it's better than me doing the cooking. I, uh, I don't really feel like going to camp. No, I wouldn't mind pushing on for a bit. Well, there's a stack of awesome tracks around here, um, and we're pretty close to a few crackers. So, what do you reckon, Dill? What do you reckon, mate? Mate, I would be keen as for a bit of a night run. Oh, we just need to do another. I reckon a couple of tracks. I, I like a bit of a night drive. Well, mate, I reckon that's a top idea. Let's push on and, um, yeah, mate, drive into the night. And with that, our course was set, and soon it was pitch black. Right, fellas, here we are. Lights are out, and um, yeah, I reckon we turn up here and have a bit of fun. What do you reckon? Everything changes at night. I tell you what, if ever you've driven a track a dozen times during the day and got a bit bored of it, well, wait for the sun to go down and go and do the same track again, because I guarantee you, It'll be 100% different. Yeah, it looks a bit gnarly at night, doesn't it? Yeah, it's a bit different. Light coming off the rocks and that. Is that me making that noise? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Love it. Burning rubber and all sorts of things. Now, I'm having to adopt a slightly different driving style here. Front left for me is out, so I'm keeping the front right on high lines all the way through and trying not to let it drop into anything where it's going to get wheel spin and then obviously stop me. It's a different technique and one that I don't recommend all the time because four wheels are far better than three. <laughs> However, check it out. It seems to be working. Woohoo! That was a commuting drive. Big rock step in front. So it's absolutely massive by the looks of it. This one looks a bit hairy. Yeah, it looks like the rock's actually undercut too, so anyway, we'll give it a go. <laughs> Up in front, Sean O is having a ball. He loves a good challenge, and he's doing a good job of it too. Yeah, it's not, um, it's not real easy. He's driving well, picking a good line. However, as you can see here, he's just come off the line he wanted ever so slightly. Reverses back and adjusts his line. I reckon he's got this. That's a bit sketchy, eh? Yeah, it looks it. Just winch it. Well, there comes a point when you've got to call it, and I think that point was just reached then. The beauty of this part of the world is there is no shortage of anchor points. As Sean comes up and over that little gully he's in right now, he's just got to keep an eye on the stumps that are out of the side there. This is no place to do some tyre damage, because I want to get to camp and have a cold beer. Beautiful. All righty, it's Dylan's turn. Let's see what he's got. I think that's sort of where Sean I went. Just walk straight up it, eh? Is that what you do? Oh, oh, don't break anything. Yeah, you're hitting two two perfect things at once. Right right hand down and back again. Yeah, that's, that's not bad. Don't go back anymore. And up towards me. Oh. <laughs> Wrong way. Wrong way. Now turn. That's it. Go, go, go. Oh, so close. So close on this side. 
but the, the other side's nowhere near it. I reckon I might pull the winch out, I think. Sometimes you just gotta call it. Out! There you go, mate. How much fun is this? You know, Night runs. runs. They change everything. There's another vehicle down there. I can see another set of headlights way down oh, there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just so much fun. I mean, just because the sun goes out, no, you don't have to go to camp. There's no rules. Well, you've got lights. Well, exactly. you've got lights. That's exactly right. And I think, I think everyone should really get out there and have a go at a night run because even if you've been driving the same track for the last 15 years, totally you know every, every wombat hole there is. Totally different. You'll get out here and have a stack of fun. We've been defeated. The winch has come out today. Let the winch do most of the work just till you get that tyre up. Oh, it's coming up. It's coming up. Here we go. Another metre. Pops it straight out. Easy as that. What you got to realise here is the D-Max has 31 inch tyres. We've all got 35s. He's also in two wheel drive. So, I mean, he's got his work cut out for him. And he's not holding back. He's not sitting at camp. He's giving it a red hot go. So, that's off to him. Three wheel drive action. Let's do this. Go back. You're on that rock. No, oh, 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 oh. Yeah, that's it. That's it. What are you just instantly thinking I'm going to winch? <laughs> now, I'd like to fill you full of confidence here and tell you that I've got some sort of technique up my sleeve. However, in three-wheel drive, I'm just a passenger. No. I it just came to like a metal on yeah. rock you, stop. You want, you, want this. you want to go left. And then right. Wait till the rear hits that rock and then you can straighten up. So left, wait till the rear hits the rock and straighten up. Clear as mud. Left, you're not going left. No, no. It's all right. Nah. No, it's not gonna happen. Once again, this is a really straightforward winch scenario. Just gotta pop that back end back up and over, and I'll have a crack at the next obstacle. Come on, come up, hopefully. Oh! oh that tire was on the rim, in like rocking into the rim. Finally, I'm up and over the last challenging section. How yeah, much fun is that, lads? Hey, oh, yeah. great great we, we, always have a, we, cool. we always have a bit of a rule when we do a night run. What's it's that? a long-standing tradition. The last vehicle up the hill yep. shouts the beers at camp. That, that sounds fair. Oh, yeah, that's, 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 it's always the case, actually. It's, so the last vehicle like, up the hill. Like, so, oh, D-Max actually was with Graham in it. Um, yeah, no, I'll shout the beers. No, no, no I can do that. I can shout the beers. Right. Okay, fair. I know exactly where they are. <laughs> In your bridge. Yeah, right, that's are. a cracking end of the day. I reckon we can. I can only think of one better way to end it. Camp, swag, beers. Couple of yeah. beers. Out of your fridge. Yeah. Let's do it. Come on. Sounds like a plan, mate. And with that, we pointed our forbies down the track and made our way to camp. What an awesome day! We can't wait to see what tomorrow has in store. <laughs> Get more Falesset four-wheel drive supercenter with incredible deals on Adventure King's camping and outdoor gear. Take your camping experience to the next level with the amazing Grand Tourer Mark III aluminium rooftop tent. The rooftop tent that practically sets itself up. King's portable gazebos are built ultra strong with a tough steel frame, are easy to set up even by yourself and are available in multiple sizes for the campsite or the job site. The incredible new 270 degree freestanding awning can be set up in just 40 seconds and wraps around the side and the back of your car for incredible amounts of shelter. Hit the water on a King's inflatable stand up paddleboard for an insane amount of fun at the beach, the river or the dam. But warning, it's highly addictive. Plus there's fridges, solar panels and more to make every adventure incredible. At Full Drive Supercenter, you get more for less. Welcome back to day two of our Lithgow adventure. I'll tell you what boys, another glorious day out in the tracks. This weather couldn't get much better, could it? Mate, it's a perfect weather. Drive some of the harder tracks around Sydney. What do you got planned, mate? Well, mate, there's a stack of um, big ruts, rock steps, um, just tight little tracks in here. It's just littered with them. So, um, I got to sort of explore, play the day by, as it comes and just um, and see what we can find. Mate, I'm up for that 100%, 100%, lead on. Right now, we're kind of in the general vicinity of Mount Walker, which is a popular trip for Sydney siders. Drive the ruts. Now, Sean o knows this place really well. He's had plenty of trips out here with the boys from Four Wheel Drive Action HQ on various assignments, including torture tests, product reviews, and of course, just for laughs. Driving these ruts, I just want to keep the tyres on the high side and then just let the suspension sort of do its work. 
it's all about traction here. I just want to get the most amount of traction possible, which can be quite a challenge. Getting those tyres on the ground helps, or locking devices like a locker. Never get sick of driving ruts, so much fun. Okay, after that flex fest, let's see if Dylan's got the flex to get him through unscathed. This is the kind of terrain the boys built these trucks up to do, and as you can see, they do it really well. It just works, and if you're gonna do these kind of tracks, these are the kind of trucks that do it with ease. Yes, yes, yes. That's tucking hard. And how's the boys' attitude towards wheeling? They just love it. You can see they're having the time of their lives. And why wouldn't they too? This stuff rocks. Okay, my turn. Let's see how the mighty D-Max handles this in three-wheel drive. Technique through here, of course, is high line where possible and try and keep all three driving wheels on the ground at one time. If I can't have all three on, at least have the rears pushing me through the ruts. And really, that's all there is to it. You don't need too much. And I'm going to demonstrate that in three-wheel drive. <laughs> that was cool. Yeah, how good's that? Good. That's good fun, isn't it? You spent most of your time on three wheels. That was unreal. Three-wheel drive action. I know. Speaking it? of which. Yeah, exactly right. You're not the first person to try this one in three-wheel drive, by the looks of it. a trophy, that thing there. What do you reckon it comes from? Oh, Ranger, Triton, yeah, some sort of IFS vehicle. Oh. Speaking of which, what do you got planned next? You got that big hill, haven't you? We're going to go to Mount Walker. Mm. Really A-grade track. Um, done it in shorty. What yeah. do you reckon my chances? Mate, look, if you're in four-wheel drive, yep. definitely. Yep. Um, in three, two-wheel drive at best. Two-wheel drive at best. I think... Um, no go? No go for you. Busted CV, I'm out. All right, well, I'll tell you what. I've got a B plan. You know the Lost City? Yeah, you beautiful down there. You that, I think. Beautiful down there. That. Yep. I'm going to go and have a look at that. So what, if I give you blokes two hours? Oh, 10 minutes. I'll give boys. you blokes two hours. Three, three, three hours. <laughs> <laughs> two to three hours. I'll give you blokes two to three hours. And we meet on that junction somewhere on the way down to the river. Yep. Cox's yep. River. Yep, done. We're going to go and camp on that little pen peninsula there. Done. All right, Easy, couple mate. hours. Easy, I'll see mate. you down there. All right. See Enjoy. So you what, have a look at that view, you know. We're about two hours from Sydney, and I mean, I reckon a lot of locals are in the Sydney area just wouldn't even know this place exists. And I mean, look at it. It's got some of the best four-wheel driving. If you're after tough sort of tracks, you know, it's got a lot of sandstone sort of country, so you're going to get good rock steps, you're going to get big ruts, just overall difficult tracks, but there's something for everyone out here. You don't need a big modified four-wheel drive. There's a lot of points of interest, things to go and see, like the glowworm tunnels and um, a lot of history out in this area, and um, it's just the perfect place, in my opinion, to get the family out, get your mates out, and um, come and spend a weekend, because there's so much to see and do, and trust me, you'll come out for one weekend, and you'll find yourself a local out here, because there's just so much to see and do. It's unreal. It's never too long before Sean leads the way into some action. Couple little rock steps up here, boys. It's, um, it's starting to get a little bit tough. And I say it's a little one, it's actually growing as I get closer. Yeah, they tend to do that, the old rock step, when you get up to them. Yeah, it really was a doozy of a rock step. You could see the big 80 fighting for traction through there and just getting it and popping him up over the top. And I reckon with that front locker in, Dylan and Jacob will do this a lot easier. Up we go. Up we go. Still a bit of a scrabble, but no big deal. Oh, it's, it's straight up. It yeah. is straight up. Now, as a rule, rock steps generally have plenty of traction. And it's all about line. Try and find a high point and keep your vehicle as level as possible. Yeah, nice little drive. Yeah, not bad. This is a cool little step. Yeah. Not too far away, and I'm weaving my way down towards the lost city. But I'm faced with a few fun looking bog holes, and well, I'm not the kind of bloke to go around a challenge. I'm going to give it a go. This looks like fun. Let's have a crack. But I tell you what, these bog holes are stagnant and they stink. <laughs> really unusual for me to see other dual cab utes out on these tracks doing what the D Max is doing. It really is quite incredible. <laughs> ah, we're all in the car. Yeah. Sean and the boys have arrived at the bottom of a really tough track. This is a hill of serious consequence. Look here how steep it is. What makes matters worse is just how rutted it is. It's just rutted all the way up. Big rocks, shaly stuff, no traction, and um, a gradient like this just gets worse up there. What are you feeling? I'm nervous. I think. 
You could go around the left line, it does look, there's less ruts, but you've got to do that switch back. Uh, that's the scary part, the crossover on such a yeah. steep hill. We'll just give it a go. I'll steer sorty up here and um, we'll see what happens. If you see a lot of dust and um, my road. tires, and then roof and tires and roof, then, then don't I'll, take this line. Yeah, I'll get out of the way and uh, I'll, All right. I'll go a different way. Let's get into it, eh? All right, this is super steep. Never does it justice on camera just how steep it is. I mean, you've got a couple of rock steps halfway up. It's going to test the nerves. Sort of just want to drive it in one go, though, that's for sure. A lot of dust. Oof. All right, one more go. A little bit further. Oh, that's a bit of oh, sugar in the eyes. Just going to put a rock underneath those rear tyres just to try and get that little bit of traction so I'm not climbing two sets of tyres at the same time. Might be just a little bit of difference I need. Yeah, a little bit of clutch on that one. Unreal. <laughs> There we go. How was it? It was a little bit gnarly, mate. Yeah. It lifted a tyre as I was turning, which yeah. I didn't want to be doing, but it, um, I had to punch it up there, yeah. unfortunately. Just didn't have that traction on the front to really get me Pull going. Up, yeah. That was good. It's a steep hill. <laughs> Sometimes you can't drive it, put a few rocks down, and it makes it look easy. Now for the rest of the hill. That's nice and close. <laughs> yeah, good work, mate. Good work. How good was that? Mate, what a drive. So much fun. Yep. Holy Oops. heck. Now, boys, I'm going to pass this over. There's not as much left as before, <laughs> but you might need it. I'm going to take that, and I'm going to put that right uh, in this pocket. You know when you struggle to stand up on a hill, it's super steep. So steep. I've got the old handheld, mate. Yep. Good luck, oh, fellas. Go, no. There's one thing I can't recommend highly enough on really tough tracks, and that's a handheld communication device. In this case, I've got a little GME handheld radio. It's five watts, plenty of punch for these tracks, and it just... I can just tell exactly what's happening with the vehicle, where the tyres are, and look, if I can save one bit of panel damage, well, this thing's paid for itself at least 20 times over. So, good thing to have, and... Um... Yeah, boys, come through, are you ready? Copy that, here we come. All right, Dylan and Jacob, they're a bit shaky walking up to this one, but I reckon that truck is just gonna eat this hill. All right, all right, it's show time. See, Jacob's holding on nice and tight. Well done, mate. You just hug that. That's a wheel in the air. That's a go, nice drive. Unreal. That was fun. How good was that drive? Nice and steady on the throttle. He basically just walked straight up here. Not a worry in the world. Awesome drive. Boys, what a bloody oh, drive, eh? Mate, that Unreal. was scary. How'd you go in there, mate? All right? Oh, I held on. I was all right. Hey, I've got something for you. What's that? Didn't I even didn't, use much. Didn't even need it. <laughs> I'll take that back because I'll need it for the rest of this hill. Yeah. Yeah, how fun was that? Look, you can have big lifts, you can have all the lockers you want, but in my opinion, if you don't have a good set of rubber, well, you're really disadvantaged on tracks just like that. Now, that track was super shaly, big rocks, a couple of rock steps, and the traction was really hard to find. So you really want a tyre that has big tread blocks, quite aggressive like these X3s from General Grabber. That way you can get more rubber on the ground, a longer footprint, and it'll give you heaps more traction. Look, if a good set of tyres isn't high on your priority list, you really have your priorities all wrong because a good set of tyres will get you further than nearly any modification on your four-wheel drive. Well, plenty more tough tracks to go. Let's get into it. Not long now, and I've just about reached my destination as well. Ah, oh, there we go. Have a look at that, will you? That's so cool. I've got a perfect day for it too. Just a bit of cloud cover to softening that light. The lost city of Lithgow. Let's go down and take a closer look. Many moons ago, you used to be able to drive right down to the base of these sandstone formations, but for some reason they blocked it off. I don't really know why, I guess maybe people were driving on it being a bit silly, I don't know, but now you've got to park up and walk down. So I'm going to park up here and walk down, grab my camera and go for a look. Oh, that's cool. These rock formations, well, they're just sensational. It really is a photographer's dream, especially if you get down here at sunset. That looks pretty darn cool. You know, when you get to a place like this, it's easy to get overwhelmed with the scale of the place. It's just so darn big. I mean, how do you capture it? And so one thing I always sort of do as a bit of a go-to is just run panorama mode. I've got it in my camera here. iPhones or any other sort of smartphone these days do a really, really good job of doing a panorama. 
And what you can do with that, of course, is just get a sweeping view of where you are. And it captures the whole thing. One tip with that, though, is try and wait until you get a bit of something happening with the light. You can see these rocks behind me are just lit up at the moment. It's a good time to do it. The second tip, probably more important than the first tip, whether you bring your camera, whether you bring a phone, whether you bring an entire camera crew, just make sure you get to places like this because it's bloody fantastic. As much as I'd like to stay here and get a few more shots, I've got to get a bit of a wriggle on. I've uh, got a pin drop here where I'm going to meet the boys. It's right on the junction, two major sort of tracks, I guess you'd say. And then we're going to head straight on down. We're going to be camping right down on the banks of the Cox's River, which is almost backing onto Lake Lyle. So you've got water sports down there, beautiful bass fishing, trout fishing, and it's a really cracking little campsite too. So I better get a wriggle on because I've got a fair bit of ground to cover. I don't think the boys will be waiting though. They'll be having a blast. A couple of kangaroos across the road here. Seen that one dart right in front of you. Heading down to camp? Yeah, it's a plan, mate. Getting you know, around that time of day. Camp's not too far away, but we've got a couple of obstacles before we get there. Oh, uh, boys, um, a bit of a creek crossing by the looks of it. Look deep, I can't see it. No, uh, it doesn't. It, oh, it's hard to tell. It's a very long one, and um, it could be anything, to be honest. Um, I might have to stop and check it out. All right. Judging by this, mate. Mate. I'd say it's rock hard in there. Oh, that'd, be, <laughs> that'd be beautiful. I'm going to go in and have a look, actually. Sensational. You want to go for a walk? Uh, pardon? You want to go for a walk? Yeah. Well, I'm not going to drive it without having a walk. I wouldn't. Oh, without... yeah. What's so good about this is you can just pull your boots off without even trying to really get stuck to the mud. Yeah, she's, um... What's it like in here? Is it really... Oh, yeah, no. Oh, there's a few good ones in there. It's actually it's actually rock hard in here. The base is all right there? Yeah, you, once you get through that metre of mud. Yeah, you, exactly never judge from water crossing by the first couple of metres. Usually, I thought it was the old rule of like eights. If you test the first like eight, you... The rest is good? No, far out. This is... It's getting deeper, though. That's a problem. That's getting pretty deep, dude. It can't get any deeper than that. <laughs> this is after the max. For can't sure. get any deeper than that. <laughs> right, let's talk about packing recovery gear and spares and tyres and things like that. I just pack a Sean Whale. <laughs> Great accessory to have. Doesn't think too much before getting into things like that. Off he goes. Look at him in there. He's got his hat kind of weirdly on his head. He's just... <laughs> just in case I need to swim for it. <laughs> He's just in there having a ball. What do yeah. you reckon, mate? Look, it's it's getting sh I'm getting towards the shallow end on this side. The that's famous for sure. last words. Mm. Pretty deep. Nah, it's drivable. I'm soaking wet, but it doesn't matter when you've got good quality seat covers. Oh, wish me luck, fellas. Oh, oh, oh. It's got to get shallower soon. <laughs> that's a deep water crossing. He's all right, but oh, that's deep. Yeah, it's definitely rocky and um, definitely a little deeper than I thought. <laughs> There's heaps of traction in there, boys. Dylan's up and he's not going to be holding back. He goes nothing. It's actually a lot deeper than it looks, but it's got a very solid hard base. So it's just a matter of keeping momentum up. Keep that bow wave in front. Don't stop, of course, and you will make it across. But gee whiz, it's a daunting crossing. Now for the D-Max. It's getting about that time of day, boys. Um, what do you say we get into camp, find a nice camp, maybe beside the river or something, and um, I'll tell you what, I'll even cook something half decent tonight. That plan was sounding really good up until the last sentence, mate. <laughs> I said half decent, I didn't want to like get your hopes up. Not too far, and we arrive at camp, and it's an awesome little spot. Now, it's early on in the year, so of course, it's still nice and warm beautiful clear nights. No permits are required to use this particular campsite, but folks, please take your rubbish out with you. This place does get a lot of traffic and well, it's not always looked after. So take out more rubbish than what you bring in. And that's exactly what we're going to do. You know what, how good is this campsite? We're down on the Cox's River, right near Lake Lyle. And we're doing a little recipe I like to call bush bash and burritos. Why bush bashing? Well, we've been doing a fair bit of that in this trip. So I'm going to grab some key ingredients out. And um, it's, look, what I love about this one, oh, it's straight in there, isn't it? Straight in there. Have you got that present for me? What, you, you promised a present? Yeah. Yeah. What I like about this recipe in particular, it's just so easy to make. Basic ingredients. It, look, anyone could make this. You know, you don't have to be a chef like me or Graham. He's not much of a chef, but you, you can do it. In, what are you doing in there, mate? Hey! While you're in there, grab some chicken because chicken's one of the mate. Here. Yeah, there that. you go. Chicken. 
There you go, mate. There's one. Two. Got that. I haven't forgotten about that present either, mate. Yeah, I'm getting it for you now, mate. Settle down. All right, so we've got some chicken tenderloins. How good are they? Yeah, because we're cooking the old bush bashing burritos, that's a bit of a Mexican theme. Now, we're going to cheat a little bit here. Make it easy. That's what you want to do when we're camping. Burrito mix. Get this. Present, mate. That's it. That's that it. Might be is my present. Yep. You gotta yours. And you get one too, do you? Out of your fridge. Yeah. <laughs> it's tradition, mate. Cheers, mate. Cheers, cheers. buddy. Good cheers, cheers, cheers. What are you making here? Not much yet, from what I can see. Bush bash and burritos. Bush bash and burritos. Now, what does it go into? What do, what do you do? This is what's so good about it. Yep. Like making Mexican, you know, we could talk about spice rubs on meat and you gotta spend hours smoking things and rubbing things together. What you wanna do is just go into your woolies, grab yourself a burrito spice mix. Yep. This is basically your rub. Now, how are you rubbing things, mate? Really good. Yep, we'll rub a fair bit of that stuff on here. And the way to do that real quick, chuck in a few of these tenderloins. Get in there. I'll get this going right now, bang. So it gets yep. a bit of heat going on that. Chuck them all in, come on. Shake and bake, that's the key for I'm this. Put that one in there. And, all right, so I'm gonna do exactly the same thing. And, all right, now, you wanna put a bit of oil in the old pan? You do need oil, yep. Get a bit of that in there. Oh, it smells good already. It's nice, isn't it? Now, should yep. we introduce the chicken to the pan? Exactly right, mate. All you wanna do is basically fry it. You've basically got Mexican in about five minutes. Just a, just a little bit of lime. You find these sort of things go together well. Oh, a bit of spice, good. a bit of lime. Oh, look at that. That's Mate, looking that so good. So good. Wow. You're heating those tortillas up. We yeah, are, well, you got it. You got we it. decided I don't that. need to do that. I've cut a little bit of tomato up. I'm going to cut another one up, yeah. mate. All right, I'm going to grab one of these bad boys. Okay, what's cool, this, cool. That's up. You? Boys. Get up here, y'all. Have a go of this, oh, mate. I got the hottest one. Oh, that is a nice hot one. Grab that. Yes, please. Oh, something yeah. actually smells half decent Gra up here. Grab one of those, mate. Grab one of those. Not me. All right, this is how oh, we do it. This is how we do it. Me, right. Me, what have you done? Okay, okay. Well, we've how, how strong is your stomach? <laughs> how strong is your stomach? Get a couple of these in here. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. The hottest tortilla. Look at this. Put that down. Oh, hang on. Put that down there. I reckon yeah. cheese first. Yeah, it's something melt from milk. That's yeah. it. That's it. Well done. Whoops. That's a big one. Grab. Look at that. Bit of cheese. Bit of cheese. Where does your Where does your red stuff go? How does that go? Does oh yeah, straight on. Straight on like this, mate. Yep. Do, you want, do you want some of my chili sauce? I'm gonna put a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. yeah. Boys, I'll get have, in. I'll have a blob of that. Have it. Yeah. yeah. I, I dead set made it from the chilies in my garden. <laughs> oh, there's still whole chilies in this yeah. thing. But <laughs> like crying out loud, man. Let me just stir this around. You want a little yeah. bit of this? <laughs> I've tasted this, this gear before. Oh, you what are a lily livid. Trust, trust me. Oh. That'll make me. Ooh, I shouldn't have no, even. Yeah, well, yeah, that's, that's barely tasted. That's like right. wafted, <laughs> wafted past you. Trust me, mate. Yeah. That's, this gear, yeah, that's I absolutely love this recipe. And I'll call it a recipe. I will, yeah, I will, because no, I loosely to use the term recipe. It's a nice cheat meal. It's going to cost you, oh, what do you reckon, under about 15 bucks to feed a family of four, and it's super quick to make. It's under 15 minutes. In fact, anyone can make it. If I can make it, <laughs> literally anyone can. <laughs> anyone can have a go at this one. Boys, what's a verdict? It's all right. What do you reckon tomorrow, boys? You no know, bush bashing burritos. I reckon they'll pull through. Get us up a couple of tracks tomorrow. Mate, I don't really leave camp too early, I hope. <laughs> I may need to uh, take a long walk. There's so many tracks around here, and I'm oh, just, dude. I'm just, just getting out of here. at the moment because yeah. there's so many tough tracks. Yep. It's a lot of fun. You guys are having a ball. Oh, having a Smile like from ear to ear. You find yourself out at Lithgow or any tough tracks in Australia, give this a try. Trust me. Go easy on the chili, maybe. But this will get you up any track tomorrow. That is. Look at it. That needs a warning label, Look at on, bro. It. Look at it. That is I did it. Melt it off. So good. Good on you, folks. Get more for less at Four Wheel Drive Supercenter with insane deals on King's DIY storage and 12 volt gear to build your dream four wheel drive. Whether it's an inverter you need to run 240 volt gear on the job site or the campsite, a battery box or a 12 volt control box to easily access your power. King's 12 volt DIY gear is what you need to take your 12 volt setup to the next level. Need a battery? King's has you covered with a full range of AGM, slimline and lithium batteries in sizes ranging from 98 amp hour to 200 amp hour. All built with ultra high quality components to go the distance. And of course you just can't beat King's solar panels and blankets to silently charge your batteries anytime the sun's out. At Four Wheel Drive Supercenter you get more for less. It's day three and our final day out here in Lithgow. It's also really early and the mist is hanging on the water. What a brilliant bit of wilderness, just a short drive from Australia's biggest city.
and have a look at that campsite, will you? Honestly, you want to be here right now, don't you? <laughs> I tell you what, it is as good as it looks. No time's being wasted this morning. The boys are packing up, loading up the trucks and breaking camp nice and early. We've got a big day on the tracks. It's our last day out here. And we want to make the most of it. The little town of Lithgow was actually established, believe it or not, right back in the 1870s. Now, because of the fact that it's perched on the edge of the Blue Mountains, the Zigzag Railway, which you'll hear a lot about when you do get up here, had to provide a lot of tunnels and railway lines all through these hills. Tracks involved as well. Now, also, Lithgow is situated right in the middle, smack dab in the middle, of coal country. So what does that mean? It means there is a maze of tracks out here that date right back to the 1870s. Some are hard, some are easy, but they are all in spectacular Blue Mountains country. One last thing, I've wheeled up here when it's been 45 degrees and the dust is so thick you think you're gonna choke. On three separate occasions, I've been up here and it has snowed so heavily, the branches on the trees have broken off. Lithgow truly has something for everyone. Speaking of tunnels, as I just mentioned, if you're out here with kids or kids at heart, such as myself and Shauna, you've gotta check out the Glowworm Tunnel for very good reason and I'm about to show you that because that's where we're heading next. Here we go boys, into an old tunnel. This is, um, you don't get to do this every day in a four-wheel drive. Ah, it's pretty sick that is. Tell you what, that cruiser sounds tough going through this tunnel. It does, it sounds very echoey now. Oh, listen to that. So was this actually part of the old train line or just blew it out for a road? No nah, mate, this was the old train line. It's funny to think trains used to come in here now, we're driving through it. You sure as heck wouldn't want to meet a train coming head on. Lucky for us, it's now disused and is a very popular destination for four-wheel drivers and hikers alike. That's so cool. Have a go at this, will you? That's cool. Exactly right, mate. A little ray of sunshine. Trains have long gone, but now living inside the tunnel are millions of small glowworms. How cool is this? This, of course, is the famous glowworm tunnel just out of Lithgow. It's got its origins right back in the late 1800s when they were putting the zigzag railway through, and of course, all the mountainous terrain of the Blue Mountains necessitated that they had to put these massive tunnels through. There's a few of these like this. This is probably one of the most famous ones, of course, because of little glowworms. They're not actually worms, they're actually the larval stage of a native moth. And the little glowing part down the bottom end of them is a chemical reaction, very, very similar the glow sticks that you might see kids running around with at Christmas, etc., etc., and they're used to attract small insects that they then prey on, and they grow into the moth and they fly out of here. To see them, where the boys are, you've got to go down around the corner there into the really dark stuff, away from the entrance here, which I'm standing in the light of right now, and just stay still, let your eyes adjust, and then all of a sudden the whole tunnel <laughs> just turns into a glowing festival of stars, which is actually, well, a chemical reaction in the bum of a worm, <laughs> which is not quite as romantic. I'm going to go and have a look now. Well, if you've come this far and got to Lithgow, I reckon you owe it yourself. To come in here and have a look at the glowworm tunnel, check out the glowworms. If you've got tin lids, oh, they will it. go Absolutely. nuts. Heck, heck, heck nuts. I love it, so. Yeah, big kids will love it too. You've got these massive cliffs up here. There's a walk that stretches on down through there if you've got plenty of energy. However, we, back through there, behind the wheel, what do you say? Yeah, good. It's, it's, a, good, it's a good track, it's not far from here too. Nah, so. just five minutes away. Let's go. Yeah, good. Don't get scared in there this time. <laughs> Don't hold my hand, mate. <laughs> Well, boys, driving down um, the old power lines, it can only mean one thing. Yeah, mate, power lines, in my experience, tend to mean four-wheel drive tracks. If you find power lines pretty much anywhere in Australia, follow them, you'll find some four-wheel drive tracks. Yeah, mate, and <laughs> it looks like a lot of clay rutted hills and multiple clay hills at like that just down in front of us. Yeah, you'll always find the, uh, the good steep ruts along the power lines, I find. Do, do people who work on the power lines just drive around on 38s and stuff? Because there's some pretty big tracks around power lines. I've always thought that, man. Like they must just drive around in these massive, massive trucks carrying all their tools and just wheeling for the day. They say we've got a good job, eh? If there are any power line workers out there, let us know the answer to that question. For now, though, we're going to tackle one of Lithgow's more famous tracks. This, of course, is the power line track, and it starts off with an absolute doozy. This track up here is actually known as Moon Rock because it's got well, a big rock that looks like a moon. It's uh, pretty challenging too. There's a couple of different lines you can take. Well, I've been driven it for about 10 years, so it'd be good to come back and um, have a real good go at it, so fingers crossed. Now, while you're watching this, just remember, two trucks in front, double lock, 35, sassed. 
big suspension, big lifts. Me, 31s. Pretty stock standard in two wheel drive. Jono, you ready? This is a serious rock step. I'm about, I'm an optimistic four wheel driver. There's a good 20% chance I'll drive this. <laughs> yeah, it's good so far, mate. That's perfect. Stay on that line. Oh, it gets bigger as you get yeah, closer. Good, good drive. Good drive, mate. There's at least three or four different lines on this one track, and I've got to be honest, none of them are easy. Shono's best chance here is to do this in one smooth motion. That is what you call a committed effort. You're going to hit your bumper going back. Not even close. I think we've got to winch it, mate. Yeah, that's fair. All right, we're going to break out the winch here. Sean has had a fair old go at this, so I'll winch him up just this part here and he can continue the rest of the way. The trip we're going to have, of course, is finding an anchor. There's not a great deal of anchors up there. I only need a little one, mate. Go out. That's, uh, that's a steep, steep little rock step. I could just see sky when <laughs> I was giving that a go. But, um, yeah, I gave it, look, I gave it a red hot go. Sometimes you just want to be able to punch it up and over when you're down to that front locky. That's a little bit more momentum, and I gave it that, so I don't want to give it too many more goes because this is the sort of stuff you will break something, so save it a winch. Go in, mate. What's that? Now stop him there. That tie is right in the bank. It's going to roll off. Yeah. What do you mean? Oh, I don't know how that's holding air. I don't know how it's going to go, but there's not much we can do about it. Is that, is the tyres all right? Just go forward slowly on the winch. That's it, nice and slow. Just letting the winch do all the work here. <laughs> nearly there. Keep it going, you're nearly there. Can I drive a bit? Almost up on the back cab, yeah, have a little drive, a little tiny one. Yeah, don't go back, you're gonna fall in that hole. He's good. That was a bit different. That's a bit of a... Well, intensity winch. That's it. Straighten her up, that's it. Try on something a little bit different. You've got the old Shawno head cam going. You'll get the bird's eye view of exactly how nervous I can be driving big rocks like this. Righto, mate. Wipe the sweat off the brow. <laughs> Let's give this a go. Stay high on that left bank, mate. shawno has got about three pairs of eyes helping him out the front here, and he's going to need all of them. This is a pretty daunting old track, especially when you get up to Moon Rock itself. Nice, nice and gentle. That's it, that's it, that's it. Yeah. Not there. You ready, mate? Oh, a lot of scrabbling, but he's done it. Hey, mate, <laughs> that's a drive. Yeah, how good's that, eh? So oh, much fun. You just right. got to really commit. I had a little pucker moment. And I wasn't <laughs> so do I. Oh, lucky I've got heavy duty canvas seat covers, that's mate. Cause... You know, well done, well done. We are up. Radio. Put your seat belts on, slick your hair back, and drive up the hill. <laughs> Stick to your side, eh? I've just got a few rocks here. <laughs> okay, Dylan and Jacob, you've seen how it's done. Here we go, boys. Yeah, good drive, good drive. All right, the boys have got a line in mind. But that rock step is not for the faint-hearted. Just be wary of your tail sharp. How good is a front locker? <laughs> yeah, baby. You're going to turn in in a minute. I love the way the boys are working together. That is so good to see. Doesn't matter if you don't have a truck, jump in with your mate. You're going to have just as much fun. OK, the boys have done so well here. They're at the base of Moon Rock. Let's line them up and give them a shot. Right, mate, nice and gentle, crawl up it. All right, boys, Moon Rock, you've got this. Good drive, boys, really good drive. Well, that's nothing but looking at the sky. <laughs> Dang. Easy, easy. How yeah, good's that? Boop, boop, boop. That's lockers in action. Well, Graham's gonna take this, this third line here, another tough, challenging little technical drive, few rock steps all the way up, so it's not just one or two big challenges, there's literally a dozen challenges, and um, he's gonna have a bit of fun, because no one's driven this, to see what the D-Max has got in three-wheel drive. 
See that? That wheel's just not pulling its weight. You're going to notice me steering right a lot on this track. That's because I'm fighting for traction on that right-hand side that I know has got drive. Good drive, mate. Good drive. That's it, mate. Yeah. No, still going well. You're just not going forward, though. Hey, go back with a smoother rock. Go back, you're gonna have to give it some, mate. Try that. Go back, go, go back like a metre and a bit, like a full go back. Yeah, give it a bit. Your, your tyres keep turning this way. Yeah, can you pack it? Just the line's just a millimetre out. If you had that back tyre over half a foot, he'd probably walk up like a highway. But we're just going to put some rocks there so he doesn't have to climb about two foot. That's a good rock. Good rock and a good throw. It's right about here that you can really see how that lack of CV on the left-hand side is causing me all sorts of grief. But heck, done bloody well to get this far. <laughs> Rear diff and front. The everything. <laughs> what we're going to do here is we just want to get him in a better position. So we're going to use the Max Track to try and build a ramp on all four tyres. He's got, he's trying to climb a lot of rocks at the same time. That's the big problem at the moment. And he's in three wheel drive. So if we get those ramps, we'll be able to just make it so all the wheels that are driving will have traction. And he should be able to drive up here and get a different line to come up this side. Let's get some weight on this side. Break out the winch, boys. It might not look like that has worked, but it actually has, because it's brought the D-Max about a metre closer and set those tyres up nice and straight on this rock step so we can go straight off that tree and make light work on the winch. So, it's unreal. And there's no shame in winching from here. I've driven an A-grade track 90% of the way in three-wheel drive, and I reckon that is something I should be proud of. One final big winch, and I'm at the top. I am pretty stoked with that effort, I gotta tell you. I tell you what, I never get tired of this scenery. These rock formations are bloody spectacular, eh? So good. I just can't believe it's so close to Sydney and um, so spectacular. Scenery around here is crazy all around the mountain area. Want to meet the end of the track up here, I might um, even get out and um, try and get a good look at the view. How good is this? How's that view, boys? Unreal, mate. How are you doing up on these rocks, mate? You're not a big one for the heights. It's a little bit shaky, but yeah, it's worth it right. for the view. These rock formations. i got one question I've got to ask straight away. Boys, what have you thought? Unreal. You do it again? Great. Amazing. I would. Good you guys had, had yeah. an absolute ball. I saw the great. smile on your faces. <laughs> What's always got to be said? Really? The boys have enjoyed themselves? You've had a blast? Mate. I actually learned how to full wheel drive, not this weekend. No, I, well, at the moment <laughs> I thought might have, you might have got the wrong idea from a few of the tracks I drove, but I learned how to drive here and I haven't been back for a while yep. and it just reminded me how yep. good this place is. Two hours from out of yep. Sydney, you've got Lithgow down the bottom of the hill. Yep. It's just a, it, it really is a little hidden gem just that's, outside of Sydney. And it's got everything you've got. You've got touring tracks if that's what you want to do. You've yep. got ultra tough tracks if that's what you want to do. Super deep water crossings, yep. wicked campsites, rock formations. There's a couple of pubs in town. If you don't want to stay out here, you can go <laughs> there and have a couple of beers. I'm going to be back here. You two boys? Oh, definitely. Definitely yeah? back here. Shall yeah, I? Yeah, oh, look, count me in for Marsh sure. Marshflies are coming back already? Yeah. Folks, we probably will see you up here in Lithgow because we hang out here a lot. But if you don't, uh, your turn. Where are you going to see us? I'll probably see you up the coast. <laughs> Where are you going to see us? At Four Drive Action. Thank there you very much. Go. Good help is hard to get. <laughs> If you're after a next level 12 volt upgrade for your vehicle or your next camping trip, then check this out. The Adventure King's 120 amp hour lithium battery. This uses high capacity, brand new grade A lithium iron phosphate cells capable of thousands of cycles. It's paired with a high quality BMS able to output up to 160 amps of current. The future of 12 volt setups is here.
Lithium batteries are super lightweight and still have heaps of power capacity. In fact, this battery weighs just over 15 kilos. That's about half as much as a similar capacity AGM. But that's not all. Lithium batteries have the ability to use their entire capacity from 100 to 0% and still have an incredibly long life. The reason Adventure King's lithium batteries are so good is because they use lithium iron phosphate chemistry. That means if you're using the entire 120 amp hours of capacity in this battery every day, it would still last almost five and a half years. Some cheap lithium batteries use grade B or even secondhand cells to keep the cost down, but not here. Adventure King's lithium iron phosphate batteries use brand new grade A prismatic cells. When these batteries are assembled, each individual cell is matched with others and then grouped. Then those cells are balanced, which means that these batteries always function at their best and ensure you have full capacity. Another major feature of these Adventure King's 120 amp hour lithium batteries is the high quality internal battery management system. This BMS for short takes care of the individual cells. It balances them while you're charging your battery. It prevents overcharge, over discharge, over temperature and short circuits. A high quality BMS is so important and it's also incredibly important to match the BMS to the cells and the use of the battery. A good indicator of a high quality BMS is to look for high current discharge and charge ratings. This battery is capable of charging and discharging constantly at up to 100 amps and it can do a peak discharge of 160 amps of current. A high discharge current and a high peak discharge current are very important if you want to run things like inverters that need a lot of power when they turn on to fill the capacitors. If you're looking at a battery that has a much lower charge and discharge rate, they could be cost cutting by using a cheaper BMS. Lithium iron phosphate is a safe technology, unlike some other lithium chemistries, and Adventure King's lithium batteries are doubly safe. Not only are they sealed and safe to use in your vehicle, they've also passed a short circuit test, overcharge test, over temperature test, and a vibration test, so they're ready to be put to use. Some lithium batteries are extremely sensitive to hot and cold temperatures, and they can be damaged or destroyed by trying to use them. Adventure King's batteries, though, can be charged anywhere from zero to 50 degrees Celsius and used or discharged anywhere from negative 20 right through to plus 60 degrees Celsius. They use threaded M8 terminals for high power output and easy connection. Measuring it at 330 millimeters long by 162 millimeters wide and 215 millimeters tall, they fit perfectly in an Adventure King's battery box for a lightweight and powerful portable power station. And with 120 amp hours on tap, you could run a camping fridge for five or even six days. Or you can permanently install them in your vehicle for a next level, super powerful setup that barely weighs anything. And for that reason, they're perfect for your full drive, motorhome, caravan, or camper trailer, where you need to be concerned about GVM and GCM limits. So if you want a safe, lightweight, super powerful, and super long lasting lithium battery for your next level setup, you can't beat an Adventure King's 120 amp hour lithium battery. Introducing the incredible Adventure King's Premium Camp Oven Stove. Your new best mate for delicious barbecue or campfire cooking and warm, cozy fires whether you're at home in your backyard or at your favorite campsite. Let me show you all the things that I absolutely love about it and I'm sure you're gonna love too. This amazing bit of gear has been designed right here in Australia and it combines a camping stove and a portable barbecue into one. It can run off multiple fuel sources, wood, heat beads, charcoal, briquettes, and more. When it's time to cook up a feast, you can fit two large pots or pans on this huge flat cooktop surface that measures in at 520 millimeters long by 300 millimeters wide. That's enough space to cook up a feast for the entire family. And because it runs on wood or heat beads, you can leave the gas bottle behind. One less thing to pack. And when you want a beautiful roaring campfire, use the included hook tool to simply lift the two-piece lid off completely and just add in some more firewood. 
the raised enclosed design means you won't risk scorching your grass, your deck, or even your driveway. And you'll be able to use it for a beautiful warm fire at campsites that don't allow open ground fires. Plus, your fire would last longer because you're closer to the heat. Now that's cozy. The enclosed design means it's super efficient and you can make the most of your fuel by directing the heat exactly where you want it. You can even adjust the temperature of your fire by varying the airflow. With these sliding vents on the side, a two-piece removable lid on top and an adjustable flue, you're always in control. Remove the entire lid for an open fire or just this circular inner piece if you need extra heat for cooking, like searing steaks to finish them off. And this up here, now that is a real game changer. A chimney that extends over 2.4 meters off the ground to direct smoke away from your campsite for smoke-free campfires. You can even position the premium camp oven stove under your awning, your gazebo, or your shed for maximum warmth. And the angular offset chimney piece allows smoke to funnel away rather than getting trapped underneath. There's even a spark arrestor on top for good measure. There are so many more things to absolutely love about the King's Premium Camp Oven Stove. It's been designed to be super sturdy with these four large legs that extend the footprint a foot wider in both directions for excellent stability. The legs simply screw into the bottom like this and you can remove the middle piece for a lower fire. This huge access door swings open with the included hook tool to allow you to easily refill the Premium Camp Oven Stove as required. Inside, you've got this fuel rack that keeps your wood or your charcoal up off the floor, maximizing airflow and preventing wasted heat. It's a breeze to transport, set up and pack down to with no tools required. Each of the four two-piece legs simply screw together and the chimney pieces pack into each other with everything fitting into the main body of the premium camp oven stove for simple transport. Make sure you don't miss the incredible genuine cooking accessories available too, like a proper wood-fired meat smoker and a clever barbecue hot plate set to really take your camp cooking to the next level. And a stainless steel water boiler too. Whether I'm at home in my backyard or out camping with family, my mates, or even by myself, I absolutely love my Adventure Kings premium camp oven stove. It's a portable fire pit, it's a wood or charcoal barbecue, and it's the centerpiece of every backyard get together or camping adventure, and I know you're gonna love yours too. You asked and we've listened. The incredible MT1 Go Anywhere camper trailer has just received an ATM upgrade to two tonnes. All new Adventure Kings MT1 camper trails will now come with the new upgraded two tonne ATM. But don't worry if you already own an MT1 because a retrofit upgrade kit is available too. The MT1 is already an ultra tough trailer with a one piece 150 by 50 mil chassis that extends right from the drawbar all the way to the back of the trailer. Now it's even tougher with upgraded suspension, bearings, brakes and wheels to bring it up to a two ton ATM. The brakes are upgraded from 10 inch to 12 inch electric brakes. The alloy rims are now rated to two ton ATM and an upgraded set of suspension arms also suit the upgraded ATM. And for existing owners, the retrofit upgrade is incredibly easy to do at home yourself. Everything just bolts onto the trailer with no modifications needed. That extra payload capacity means that you've got more ability than ever before to carry the gear that you need and still remain legal. For more information and full detailed specs on the MT1, see the four wheel drive Supercenter website. Now with a two ton ATM upgrade, the Adventure Kings MT1 Go Anywhere camper trailer can carry more gear than ever before.